Hello and welcome to Darius Comic School. And I was gone for a week in Italy. I was on a family trip to clear some inheritance stuff. It was a mess. And last week um, Ed Pit Piscor took his life and let me share some thoughts I have on that situation. In fact, this video will be called my thoughts on Ed Piscor situations and how to be a man. I think this will be a very strong and good video. Um, it may be a bit longer, so stay with me. This will not be a video like some certain YouTubers that try to give you a pain point and then sell you the solution at the end of the video. It kind of is, but I have nothing to sell to you. Like, I don't want your money. Um, you might want to listen to some life advice um, and to some practical stuff that helped me go through difficult shit. And here we come to the introduction. So I, uh, I wrote it down. I will take a few um, notes here and there. So... Point one will be the introduction to all the points. And number one, in which we'll go in a few seconds, will be um, on how I learned to become or be a man and um, what that enables you to do or what it, that enables you to come to you. It will be a story I experienced last week um, on Friday or Saturday on a train after a very um, troublesome week in Italy. We will go into that in a few seconds. After that, we will dial back to a scene a few days before that train scene where I had some suicidal thoughts due to a uh, huge pressure of my family and especially um, my sister to man up in a situation that wasn't my fault. Uh, again, it was about inheritance, um, something that's going on for a very long time. Our family is very big in Italy um, and my father um, died some 30 years ago, 34 years ago. I was five years old and stuff wasn't cleared up because there was always um yeah they were kind of fighting fighting over the inheritance and who gets what um but after all like in the process everything turned into like not what to inherit but how much is this gonna cost us and it was more or less a thing about depth and getting um, like receiving depth, uh, not, not depth, uh, a depth, um, like money you have to pay. I'm sorry, I can't explain. But yeah, my kind of my family, after me going through all the motions, making things happen um, internally, blamed me and got me last Tuesday to a point where I was, I'm always pretty happy but just the pain and the stress was too much um, that suicidal thoughts popped into my head. But I came out of it and that is then part two of this video. Then number three will be um, become a total, total monster and a gentleman. Um, we will lean there into something that has plagued um, man uh, probably for the past 20 to 30 years um, and I would say that comes with the advent of um, probably divorce, men's not being there or fathers not being there for their families, um, the way we work right now or maybe even longer than that. Um, mothers raising single children. So this is not a very political video. It's just it's just a video on on the Ed Pisker situation and how I see it. But yeah, um, 
it's 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 a concept like Jordan Peterson. I am a fan of it, but I don't think everything he says is um, gospel. But he has some fair points, like become a total monster and then learn to be a gentleman, or you know what I mean. Um, I would say uh, most, or probably, if you're a Jedi, you're a very powerful being, but you use it or try to use it for the good. Um, a Jedi is, I think, something like a knight or a samurai. They have a code of conduct. They have a way of living. Um, and I think um, because we lost that, um, and it's very popular, like words like manifesting and stuff like that. You know what I mean? The whole internet is full of that. But I want to give you some things I experienced and practical advice. And then the last point I will talk about is um, money, security, stability, um, and probably or sometimes being a starving artist slash nerd. Because we wouldn't have this discussion probably um, <laughs> if comic artists or artists in general wouldn't be so sensible. And I have to say, um, I was called a sensible kid like very many times. And I always wanted to be rugged and tough and all of that stuff. And I think I acquired some of that. But in a certain way, I would say being sensible is a superpower because you see stuff other people don't see. Um, and they say your wound is your womb. So um, a couple of my wounds were my father died when I was five years old, five year, years old. Um, um, most of my family lived in Italy, so my father came to Germany to uh, work here in a factory and provide for the family in um, Italy, and it was like in a rural, rural um, area where they bought a tractor from the money he sent back home, and they bought land, and they bought... Um, stuff to cultivate the earth and then once he married my mother and after a couple of years my mother um, I guess begged him to not send money anymore or not as much and to take care of his own family and build his own kingdom which he then did um, until he died at 40 years old uh, from a stroke in a hot August day. Who knows what he got? Maybe um, too much stress or he didn't eat right. I can't really tell you, but I will go into the points. And if you made it this year, the fun part starts now. So um, I went last week to Italy, not because I wanted to, but because I had to. There was a family issue to clear up, something about um, an inheritance and There was not. Uh, there was land to inherit, but also debt. That's what it's called. Like money you have to pay or owe the state. So nothing really to be very super happy about it, but it needed to be done because we just, or I pay just taxes and I cannot sell it because I do not own it. And now the papers are made and I own it, but I need to pay for it. Um, and there was an unlucky situation created by the family where um, my mother, my sister and me had to pay much more than the others and that created stress and so on. So um, traveling there um, while it, it was a huge stress, so I, don't, I, I want to spare you that. But at Saturday, after a whole week of night and day stress with some sprinkled in funny and beautiful moments, but wasn't all pleasant so uh, we were back from uh, we were on the train from from Pescara to Ancona and that was the first time I tried or could relax after very stressful days and the train was very full 
and we were about to sit down and so uh, my sister took up her place and normally we would all sit all four together but the train was so full and at the station they made uh, some two seats for her and her son and two seats for me and my mother and I took care of kind of like my mother and we sat down and I picked out a place where there was four seats and a table and a young beautiful girl, girl was sitting there and I asked pretty kind like is it okay if I sit here and she said yeah, yeah no problem take a seat and so I put there my mother I took our suitcases and put them up and we sat down and relaxed but my sister and me we had to search for um, the next venue where we would stay for the night in Ancona. And so I knew I could only relax a few se seconds and then I had to kind of go back to my sister and take a place for the night. So I, I sat there, I relaxed for a little bit and I don't know how, but the girl, I, I don't know how, um, the girl in front of me was pretty was pretty pretty can you say that and i don't know like i don't look like the best in my life but um i had cultivated for the past or the last year um a bit of a bit my body i mean i'm not really super strong but i'm trying to get in the best shape of my life um last year someone I wanted to pick a fight with me and I cannot box and I realized back then that I need to maybe need to be able to defend myself and so I now go to kickbox and boxing and um, I used to do a bit, a bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with my cousin and I used to be a shy nerd kid when I was young full of dermatitis and I changed my diet and so the dermatitis went away and If you know my comics, like The Last Pickup Artist, it's very much about becoming your true self and strong and um, in your own integrity. And I love movies like They Live and all of that stuff, you know what I mean? A bit of the conspiracy stuff to get people to be free human beings. So I was sitting there and I looked at that girl and she was pretty, pretty beautiful. And I thought to myself, okay, whatever, like, just chill, relax, calm down. And um, I went to my sister, I talked to my mother. Um, my mother and my sister are pretty crazy people. They're always ball busting me, um, always hysterical. And so I never lost my cool because that's something I learned um, a year ago when I got out of depression that... You like the stoic trait every man wants. Um, I learned that skill, but I, I but I acquired it the hard way. So you can't bust my balls. If you do so, I will tell you to stop, or I will leave, or I will start to get aggressive. Like I have many tools to deal with it, but I always try to be polite. Um, and I don't know if she picked up. On those vibes but you couldn't get me off center this is what i'm talking you you couldn't get me off center not in this moment um and then some other woman like um came in uh and she wanted to put up her suitcase i don't know on top of mine or between mines and it didn't fit so i stood up and i just um, took my suitcases and put them aside somehow and I just naturally picked up hers and I, and I asked can I, can I put it up like I don't know it seemed pretty heavy and I just am used to lift heavy shit and she said yeah do it and I did it and put it up and set myself down and that's it so I was in a chilled modus but I was pretty I was pretty stressed but also pretty calm And I did, I didn't get things, I didn't let things get to me. That's a very important point. And it's not that I'm not sensible, I'm very sensible, but I just thought, I don't care. 
and I won't get this now to me. And if someone like disrespects me or is very hectic or hysterical, I will always say, calm down, chill. We will handle this in a calm and mature way. And things happened some to women um, where kind of, I don't know, they, uh, like there were passengers and they were fighting over seats, pretty heated, a couple of meters from where my mother and I was sitting. And it bothered me, but I stayed relaxed. Like, what can I do? People fighting over a seat. If, if something would have happened, I would have stepped in at any second because I'm, I'm like your Michael J. Fox in, in, in Back to the Future. I, I, if I see injustice or, or if I see something that it's not going the right way, I'm ready and able to step in and calm everybody down. And I wouldn't shy away to use force. Not that I'm uh, probably I can't fight, okay? But I wouldn't shy away to use my voice or force to enforce something that might resemble justice, which doesn't make me a vigilante, but you know what I mean. I would always try to calm things down and to say, okay, that's enough. Calm down, chill, shut up now. Um, not that it's always the right thing to do, but I wouldn't shy away. And I think um, at that point, my nephew was kind of sitting. I asked him, yeah, I, I got back to my sister. This is a length. Uh, I, I get to the point. We're coming to a good scene. Wait a second. I got back to my sister. I was sitting there at her, her place and my nephew too. And we booked, we, we searched through some hotels we booked a hotel and right when we were at the end of booking um, some two passengers showed up and my sister had just one seat and so I took my nephew with me and I let him sit with my uh, mother um, and me and with that girl um, and I asked is it okay like we don't have a place and is it okay if I take a seat next to you and she said yeah no problem sit down so I sat down next to this girl which I found attractive but whatever I'm just going from A to B on my mission and at a certain point after all these things happen I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking okay and half an hour we arrive in Ancona or 15 minutes or I don't know, something like that. Um, and all of a sudden, like this girl leans her leg on my leg, like I'm sitting right next to her and she's touching me with her leg, like really subtle. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, um, and you might watch this and think so what the fuck where is this going but stay with me like this goes very deep and so this girl which i find very attractive but i had didn't have really the time or the mental bandwidth to think about this is now touching my leg with her leg and it's pretty cool in a way okay and so i'm kind of doing nothing because um a while ago, I found a guy on the internet called uh, Zander, Casey Sander. I will link him down below or maybe up here. And he made a, a f he has a bunch of videos about money and masculinity. And he used to be a real nerd, and now he's kind of successful. But because he went through so much shit, and he shares his life experience, and of course he sells also a course. And not everybody likes him, and I personally hated him when I watched his videos the first time. But during the past year, or maybe two years, he helped me so much. He was like a YouTuber that broke down certain dynamics in family, in business, in flirting, in being a man. And it helped me so much that I listened to his advice. And we will come here to the point of being a man and how to be a man. So 
I did kind of nothing because for a while now I kind of realized that it's not it's it's not that you chase a girl or that it's something that you should maybe like everybody says the man has to do the first move but what it's if it's not that way what if a man is just a man and it's just su such a good man like for example oh it's such a good comic i gotta have it or it's such a cool watch i i have to have it and what if you as a man are that gem and then a woman might like you and she's initiating the contact and that's what this is and it's it goes deeper than that and You're thinking, okay, Dario, this is about the Ed Piscor situation. How does this relate? Wait a minute. We're, we're getting to it, okay? So she's touching my leg with her leg, very subtle, very subtle. Um, there are definitely um, direct women in this world, but we're suffering maybe in a, uh, from a world that has lost its values, like um, where women are now all boss girls and men's are all cowards. And maybe it should be that men are men again and women are women again. And they have just certain traits. And so I'm doing nothing. I'm just like thinking, is it possible? But okay, like, I don't care. I'm too stressed out. I'm on a train. I don't know her. My mother sits there. My nephew sits there. My sister sits back there. In 15 to 20 minutes, we go to the next hotel, we sleep there, and on Saturday, we f fly back to Germany, and then I have to work. So, I'm not really thinking about it, although she's very beautiful, 20-something, um, and um, beautiful legs, beautiful ass. Nothing more I can say, like a fit girl, okay? And you might say, and that's where the point, like, Dario, you're 39 years old, shouldn't you have a woman at that age or a family? Um, well, the past 10 years, I tried to heal my body, my soul, to uh, make my comic career and my artistic career take off. And I tried a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff failed, and now 10 years are over. And I would say, now I kind of get it. And what I get, you will hear in a second. So, um, I don't know how you would react, but maybe normally a, f a stranger, a beautiful girl, puts her legs on your leg. You could pull your leg away, but I left mine there because it's not the first time I experienced that with a woman. So that sometimes um, how women can initiate somehow contact and try to figure out who you are if you're really a man that you say you are i mean i didn't say nothing but i was communicating with my mother with my nephew i was going places i was putting up suitcases i was chilled while people uh, a meter from us were stressing out and At a certain point, I was looking this way and then I turned my head that way and she turned it also like she was kind of looking at me and I'm not super attractive. Um, but I was kind of good looking on that day. I, I had this yellow shirt. Um, I had some gray jeans. I had some cognac colored um, fine boots. I kind of looked like an Italian model and it took me a while to get a certain style not that i'm super stylish I, i i put nothing in my hair i just yeah it's just the way i develop so this is a very long video but stay with me so a certain point comes and um i go this i i kind of turn this way and she turns that way and the contact stops there and then my mother talks with me my nephew asks me something But, and everybody's on their smartphone and I'm doing just nothing, just chilling. Because I don't want to be the smartphone addict everybody else is. So, shortly after that, um, she puts her ass or behind against my leg again. Like she turns slightly in this direction and puts her ass on my leg or on my side. 
and I'm thinking, cool, okay. Um, I'm not questioning this because like it happened to me already a couple of times, but it's, this was like a, a to total stranger in, um, in a train. And it was again very, very subtle. And again, I did nothing. I just kept cool. Like it was the most natural thing in the world. And I think for me it is. And I don't know how other people would have reacted or if I was young, maybe I would have pulled back or kind of said, oh, sorry, or you know what I mean. But yeah, then we leave it at that for a second. And I don't know, we, we stay in that position for a couple of minutes and um, I turn around, she turns around, the contact is over and as a man you don't know, maybe, maybe it's coincidentally, maybe she doesn't, you know what I mean, maybe it's a co coincidence, but I can tell you this, like I was, I had dermatitis, I looked very odd most of my life, like women would and were always avoiding me like the plague um so there was always a distance that women took from me like a very very like distant and cold and rude and harsh and ignoring like even if you're sitting right in front of them they were like i was just like air and that was very hard and nobody told me and nobody taught me and that is why i had to learn the hard way and i turned to the internet um, I, I turned to pick up artists um, in the year 2010 which is now 14 years ago and in this comic called the last pick up artist there is um, a passage here uh, this one i stole from batman year one and this one i stole from robocop and this one i stole from they live and yeah a bunch of scenes and there's this scene and this scene um there are the screens in um watchmen and the watchmen comic and i thought it would be cool that i showed that the world is always on the brink of destruction like always and you feel chronic shame emptiness refugee crisis trust your doctor attempted assassination Mexico has to pay real love. And then here, the very existence of pickup or the poor shows that there is a need of clarification and guidance, which was never given and maybe even actively destroyed. So I hope I'm not, um, I hope I'm sharp in the picture right now. But yeah, now we come to the final point of the story. Let, let me, and then um, I move in this direction. She moves and the co contact is again like it's maybe just a coincidence and then i sit there and i relax back and then she comes a third time and touches my leg i like like she's almost sitting with her behind on my leg but nobody sees us just just we we two notice that like nobody else can see that i i don't think that my nephew or my mother which is almost 70 are noticing that um, behind the table we're touching <laughs> in a way um, and she's like she's like leaning very gently with her beautiful fit butt towards my leg um, and you might say okay but what's the point of this okay what's the point of this the point of this is I didn't have to do anything um, the only thing I had to do is was to develop myself in 39 years of pain and utter despair to develop myself into maybe a real man a man that doesn't seek that or need that a man that can hit, lift heavy shit without expecting something from others a man that can take care of his family and who stays calm and centered when shit around him is uh, going haywire and i think she felt a certain vibe because i saw her i think our eyes locked a couple of times but she wore glasses or shades i couldn't see her eyes so 
I couldn't look her in the eyes, but I certainly checked out her body once or twice <laughs> because that's just like a natural thing. But then I think my demeanor was whatever. Like, it's not like I was lusting over her. I had too much stuff going on in my head. And maybe she liked what she saw um, in my demeanor, in the vibe, in the things I said, not to her, like we didn't talk, no, we didn't talk nothing, like just, I asked her just a few questions, like, can I sit here, can my nephew sit here, can my mother sit here, and the rest, I think she she saw me acting, and I think that's what a woman maybe needs to see, and for the rest of the train ride, we kind of stayed in that position. I mean, maybe it was a bit awkward, but also it was cool because she was a total stranger. Um, I found her totally hot and maybe she found me hot too. And we had a certain moment. And after that, I wanted to get up and say see ya or ciao or something like that. But um, I stood up and I had to grab the baggages um, and see where my sister is and take care of my mother and my nephew and I didn't have, even had the time to say something or a goodbye or thank you for something and I don't think that it needed to but for the whole day I was like um, my spirit was uplifted and it was uplifted because um Because it's possible to have things you want um, when you turn yourself into the right thing. Um, this might sound strange. I, I don't know who's listening right now, but um, it it just shows that um, even if you're a comic artist and you're kind of skinny, you're not super f not super bulky, um, and if you're a sensible artist guy or if you're like like money didn't play a role um, in that moment it was just a certain vibe a certain feel um, that this is a man's man who cares about family who can do stuff who is competent who is a bit like a james bond and maybe has also a bit of experience and i fear a lot of stuff i mean you you can't even imagine the, the stuff i can't do But because I've invested so much time in making comics or getting myself healthy again or um, healing myself from the spiritual and emotional trauma that the world or my family caused me, but um, with time you get better. So if you're afraid of something, count it as one of a thousand And then know that you got to do two, three, four, five, six of a thousand, hundred of a thousand, five hundred of a thousand, eight hundred, nine hundred, thousand of a thousand. And I assure you, if you did it a thousand times, you will no longer be afraid because you will have gained competence in that field, whatever it is. If it's driving a car, if it's creating an income, if it's going on a date or, or being able to attract a girl you want. So I know that that Piscor, at Piscor, um, was riding during COVID, COVID uh, with a girl who was uh, 17. Um, and that is why I can, I mean, I can relate to that in a sense. Because uh, during COVID, I was also very alone but I didn't um, text with an underage girl. But um, I know those experiences because I give workshops and um, if I have... There, there are some female um, students, they might sometimes be uh, very young or under 18. There might be uh, female students that are over 18. And when I give a workshop uh, on how to draw comics or on how to draw, they, you can see it in their eyes and they ask me weird questions. Like um, at the end of the course or at the end of the workshop, uh, they, can, they can be very young, like um, under 18, or they can be 
very old, they're always like asking me, do you have a girlfriend or something like that? Or um, can I walk home with you? Or can we grab a coffee? <laughs> And if they're under 18, you got to say, sorry, but uh, I got to go. And that's just it. But I know that those things can happen and that they can, like, I don't know. An 18-year-old girl or a 20-year-old girl uh, can be very attractive. And so can be also an older woman or a younger woman. But you know what I mean? Like, I just, I can relate to Ed. And at the same time, I want to share, like, in that moment, like, she needs to be legal or 18 or above that age. Or even then, you don't know, like, she might be young Or you don't know what you're getting yourself into. So you kind of need to learn to control your urges and to become a man. Um, this video is very long and I don't know if it gives you value. But there's a second point now on suicidal thoughts. Chapter two: Suicidal thoughts and how to deal with it. So um, I never had suicidal thoughts in my life until um, COVID hit and it was a very long and stressful time of social isolation, um, of fights in between friends and family on how to get vaccinated or not. My strong position was to not get vaccinated personally for myself Because, and that is my backstory, you might be different, um, I went to the doctor for several years on dermatitis and all he gave me was a cream that suppresses that and it makes it go away. But uh, eczema is inflammation in the body. So if you have inflammation in the body, something causes that inflammation. Might be too much bread, might be too much sugar, might be too much milk and it all always boils down to too much sugar too much grain um, honey like you know your body needs to be neutral how do you say ph neutral ph neutral and uh, when your body turns acidic all kinds of health break loose um, or if you're eating only junk food your body just gets clogged up with bullshit or if you're not moving yourself in the sun if you're not working out that's not a real body and yeah but i was going through a difficult time and i broke my collarbone um, i had less money because the workshops and teachings and comic cons i was planning uh, covid took that all away and for a long long time and so i went into a downward spiral first socially then financially and then when i broke my collarbone it got also physically to me and i never had that in my life but i went in a depression i couldn't feel joy i couldn't feel clear i couldn't think or feel in a right way and i didn't know how to come out Eventually, after one or two years of reading up and trying stuff, I came out. That's a different video. If you want to hear how I came out of that, I will tell you. But basically, um, I changed my diet. I got back into um, working out. I got my body, built up my body and my lymphatic system again. And uh, I got money coming in and I got myself out of the spiral of death and stress and I learned how to relax and to be calm and yeah but that's a different story so last Tuesday there was then in Italy that's two days before the train story um, there was um, a notary appointment with a family and we met up there and um There was talk about money and depth, depth. I, I need to know, not, not depth, not, not deep, but money you have to give to somebody else, uh, depth. 
I guess. Uh, excuse my accent. And so there was a lot of money stress and then there was some stress internally in our family. And at a certain point um, at 11 p.m. in the evening, my sister lashed out to me in a pretty cool or pretty uncool passive aggressive way because I'm always for clarity and let's slow things down and let's see how we can fix this or let's fix it tomorrow let's sleep tonight let's fix it tomorrow with our strengths intact but my sister was she on the outside on, on the outside she's a boss girl she has all the money all the power all the something but I see through her bullshit but she was attacking me in a very mean way and pushing me and taking away my self-esteem, chipping away at my self-esteem. And that's where we got back to this uh, Ed Pisker situation. Um, there was also an incident with like pickup artists, like I was following real social dynamics. Um, those were people who taught men how to pick up girls. And one guy, Julian Blanc was his name, went too far and then he became the world's most hated pickup artist. And he fucked up. He, he did stupid stuff. But then the backlash that came from that, that media storm, um, which was like a global shame spiral um, that hit him in 2014 or something like that, could have killed him. Because if not, if imagine if you or I, we do something wrong or really stupid, and now all of a sudden your family, your tribe, everybody in the world starts to murder your, your reputation. Um, at first, you might hide. Maybe for the next couple of days, you might say okay i can come back from this but if it's constant attack and you're constantly losing ground and constantly giving up what was yours your identity um you kind of lose yourself and you you get into so much pain and maybe you you also don't see a future anymore a future in which you could be happy or free or or the the human being you used to be or want to be, then you go to a very dark place. And once you get to that dark place and there's no escape, um, suicide becomes a very viable option. It becomes like very... <sighs> yeah, it, it takes a lift of you because there's finally a way out of this pain. And... Um, I, I don't want to say that my family put me in this situation, but last Tuesday, while I was talking to my sister, she, I was kind of talking calm. And she was getting rude, but in a very passive-aggressive way. And she was attacking me constantly and making me feel inadequate and stupid. And she wanted to take the high ground. And everything I said she said no that's 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 just bullshit you don't know what you're talking about and you can handle that and you have to man up and you have to do this and you have to do this and until monday you have to do this and i didn't want to do that i i didn't want to do any of that because i don't operate like that and she operates she 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 was very emotional in that moment And I know that um, our family had to come up with a certain sum, but I'm, I'm, I'm not hysterical. Like I, I know we would have paid that money and then we would have got, gotten some land and maybe within a month or so we sell some of it and break even. Like that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking when I buy watches or stuff or hobby thing. I... I buy th stuff if it's rare and I can't get it and then I sell stuff to recoup the money. But yeah, at the end of that talk, which again, the week, the month before, I didn't have any air or 
any moment to relax. And so in that moment, I felt like I went to bed and um, I, I, I even can't, I, I, I can't say how it, it came, but I kind of had the feeling she's right. Um, and that maybe I'm seeing things wrong, but also the things I want to do and how I want to do them. Like I, I, I saw them just like getting smaller and smaller. And uh, I, I had my couple of next month already planned out to do comics, to push YouTube. And I saw that all taken away and me getting some other job just to earn money, just to pay the debt and um, just to please the family and be the man they needed me to do, to be. And at that time, before I went to bed, three or four times or for, for that half an hour, suicidal thoughts came up and I, th and I thought, I don't know, I, I, I can't even tell you what those thoughts are, but it's like something like suicide. Something like you ask something and that's the question or that's the answer. Um, your solution to the problem of that black darkness that you have been thrown into and you probably can't bear any longer. And you might say, okay, there you are your pussy. Can you not deal with what you've been thrown there? And I tell you, I can deal with everything, but I usually take a bit of time. And if it's something very urgent, I deal with it urgently, also violently or with a certain determination. But in that instance, I didn't think it was necessary. I thought in that ne in that situation it was the clever thing to go to sleep, to wake up refreshed and to make a plan. But my sister kept attacking me because she was in pain. And she kept attacking me and telling me what to do and being rude and chipping away my self-esteem inch by inch. And I let it happen. And at that moment I should have thought to her, you're not right. I go to sleep, I do it my way, or you can all go to fucking hell. And that would have meant um, that we might get in trouble with the Italian state. But it was not my fault. Because the family fucked up a thing. And I was made then, um, how to say, the family scapegoat. And that is what might get you killed. So, uh, let me see uh, what I've written down. Um, yeah, a man's career, his mastery, his money, it is who he is. It's not completely who he is, but what is a man without his mastery, without his money, Uh, without his purpose, I mean, definitely that's not the only thing. But to have love, to have a family, I think you need to provide. That's something I've learned very late in life because nobody told me, me and because I was chasing the dream for so long and I still am. But now I'm not playing the amateur game. I, I'm now in the game to take scalps to take the money, to keep it, and to build something with it that lasts, like a castle or a kingdom. Um, and, well, wait, wait a second, we'll come to this. And um, so, I maybe have two tips if you hit a low point, which might help or might not help. So, go to sleep, go to sleep, Belief in a higher power, that's very important to find a solution for you or believe in yourself that you will, will come up with a solution. In fact, I went to bed with that thought that some higher power, let's call it God or the universe, in my case, you believe in what you want to believe, um, will find a solution or I will come up with one. I went to bed, I didn't sleep good. But I had one good dream and when I um, woke up, I know, I knew uh, maybe I will f ask five friends for the money 
and uh, not not one friend but five friends so the money i can lend from them is a bit uh, it's a smaller sum and i can repay them more easily and i had made up in my mind that in 10 months i could have given five of my friends all of their money back and um i could pay this five loans in one month and it wouldn't kill me money wise you know what i mean the loan um monthly would have been okay or i could have sold um a few items i have in very and those two solutions were su sufficient i woke up the next day um, my sister asked me something and then i told her i had made up my mind i had two solutions and then i didn't talk with her but the next day i grabbed her and i talked to her and i said to her that she never ever could talk to me like that again ever and that she shouldn't and i told her she was emotional she was she had she should have done it differently because her stress was given to me and that wasn't right and you might call me again a pussy maybe rightfully so but i was never in that situation where um, i got fucked by my family my whole and then by my own sister over money <laughs> I guess there's always something new to learn. And then number two, to deal with suicidal thoughts is maybe, this is a very 90s approach, is to grow some balls. Um, I've visualized this and I thought like, um, and even before I went to bed, I thought to myself, okay, maybe you can't deal with this situation because like you're just too soft. So a wiser you, uh, a wealthier you, uh, a more aggressive you could have dealt with this situation in any second like like with the situation in the train with the girl it was not the first time something like that happened not in a train but in different scenarios and i knew so now if something like let's say a certain money problem comes up like this i would know how to deal with it um, you may raise some balls you only want to kill yourself because you are a pussy and you have not been in this situation yet. There is a solution, either provided by the universe or your own account. Believe in that. So there's nothing much I can say. Like, let's keep shit simple. Oftentimes, life is very simple. We just make it complicated, but then it gets like very, very bad. Uh, let me see. This is a very long video, but I think... I think it's an important video. So we're coming now to uh, number three and number five, uh, no, number three and number four. So the next point is to become a total monster and gentleman. And then the point after that is money, security, stability. But we're kind of at the end of the video. So become a total monster and gentleman. What do I mean by that? Um, if you're a woman watching this, I would suggest you do not become a monster and you do not become a gentleman you're a woman and you should stay womanly whatever that means kind soft doesn't mean that you're not strong um, but you don't have to be tough or rugged or something like that otherwise you're changing your polarity i think that's not good and if you want to talk to me on a video about this comment down below but if you're a man this is the advice i can give you um there can be no weakness this might sound very narcissistical but it's not it's like not i'm not giving you the advice to become a monster and to conquer the world i'm giving you the advice to become a monster and a gentleman and a knight to seek cooperation to be somebody who is a win or a win-win you know what i mean to cooperate but also to be able um i'm sure you're just watching the best content you want to watch i'm sure you're buying the best clothes you can afford and the nice things you want to have if you want to be in other people's life um find out who you are 
what you can be, what you give um, or what you can give in a very beautiful way and yeah I'm sure you will be fine but and that's where no weakness comes into play I was playing Risk a couple of time, uh, of weeks ago and I sucked at it and my play group and, but I know I can be very good at it and my play group played it in a very strange way like where um, if one was the strong everybody was catering to the strong and I hated it because I could see if we're not attacking this guy this guy is gonna win the game but nobody else cared everybody cared just to have their little kingdom for one or two rounds and then was happily was happy to give away the game to the number one and I found that stupid so I played very aggressively but that got me killed and that got me killed many times and that got me the title of a noob in a playgroup full of pussies so I couldn't let that sit on me and now I went to YouTube and I watched a bunch of videos on how to play Risk like a fucking pro player and I downloaded the game I took the advice I played and it fucking works <laughs> same as same goes for women same goes for if somebody's disrespecting me or if somebody's threatening your life, go to the gym, learn how to build muscle. That's a skill. Um, go to box sparring. I am not saying you should be a professional fighter, but take a lesson or go to the gym, boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu training one or twice a week. Um, if you don't know how to do a thing and that's a weakness or a thorn in your side, which I have many, then um, take your time, identify the weakness and get it from zero to a hundred and eliminate that and craft yourself into that idol you have in your mind that you can be, to, into the diamond. Um, and number two, um, if yeah, I already said if you're afraid or nervous uh, about it, like um, I didn't fly in a very long time and some things change or with every time I, I go through the boarding process, um, doesn't matter in which country I go, they always think I'm a terrorist, which is okay. I mean, I look like one. I am in a way one. But um, I'm not a terrorist. I mean, I see myself as probably this cool playboy, comic artist, millionaire who then once he had made it, um, has his family and lives heavily, ever, heavily, happily ever after. It's a mix of Entourage, the TV show, and James Bond and Gargoyles. That's my fantasy of myself. So maybe like a David Xanatos um, and Goliath. But that's my fantasy. You realize yours. And yeah, that's the advice on become a total monster and gentleman. Um, and number five, and this is also a very important point, money, security, stability. And being a starving artist slash um, a nerd and again, slash, uh, with a shitty upbringing. Um, and I think at Piscor had maybe a mix of that. I have it myself. Again, I was raised by a single mother, pretty hysterical, by a boss girl sister. Um, I had dermatitis all my life. Because I had dermatitis and asthma all of my life, I didn't go to the sports. I was skinny fat. I was not... A jock, a jock, that's what you call, like the football chat. I wasn't dead. Um, I was pretty much trashed here. Um, I was just cool because I could draw. And I was always very social and funny. Um, and there was a time I looked very good. But it was just a very short period until... My mother and family destroyed that and took that away from me. 
and I don't want to say that they're pe evil people, they're just very fearful and I don't know, just very fearful people, which is okay because all they have known is trauma. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much trash tier human male all of my life because I didn't earn them a ton of money didn't have um, a lot of strength or beauty or style or coolness because you're missing out on all those social interactions where women bust your balls and other males bust your balls and instead of retreating because you're shy or lashing out because you're socially awkward um, you start to learn the game and take those insults and kind of take them and throw it back to them in a funny way um, that takes some skill. Not a skill, uh, well, a skill I'm learning and getting better. But now imagine like, I don't know, I, I don't really know at Piscor or I didn't really knew him. Um, without Cartoonist Kayfabe, this channel would have, I, I would never have done that. So um, I'm a direct evolution of their bravery to take steps in that direction. But we're talking here just um, character of a person. And I can't, I, I, I don't know, like maybe a car, maybe if I would have taken up a career in, let's say, big tech, and I would have gone to, or if I would be an engineer or something that earns stable, high income. Um, that would have been probably beneficial to meet a girl. But again, they don't care about that too much. Like they do care about that financial stability. But they kind of want and probably need a strong man that is unchangeable, that knows who he is, um, that can say no, that can lead the way, that knows what he does. Um, that has his shit together means a place that looks like a real place, not just a fraternity home that has a car, that has some life experience. I mean, we're talking here a real king. You know what I mean? And it takes a while to become a king. You can't be a king at 20. I mean, you can be a prince, but I wasn't that prince. I was just like an the nerd kid from the high school movie that is the shitty nerd kid. Um, and at 30 you might become a king and you can get a divorce at 30, <laughs> at 40 or die from a stroke at 40. But I'm, but that I'm also not. And so this video is long and I hope you can take something from it. Um, I don't know if I made my points, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say on the Ed Piscor situation. Um, it's not about who murdered him or who he was. It's about what you might take from it and where you might <clears throat> put your focus so that you will never get into this situation or if you get in this situation, how you get out or maybe some remedies or solutions for a situation like that. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this brings some value to you and with yes. See ya.